terms of healing, um, God is showing me, you know, in the Bible, right, Jesus and the disciples, when they um, prayed for people, for healing and stuff, they came with this level of authority where they, what they spoke, what they declared happened. And I don't believe, I believe majority of people um, in those times, each and every person got healed. Like, every time, every time Jesus laid hands on, every time he prayed, was it, they got healed every time. And that began to play on my mind. I was like, okay, so then why is it, you know, today sometimes we like pray and we don't always see stuff happen or, you know, it can be a bit confusion, confusing. And I just wanna say, I'm sorry if any of you have gone through disappointments um, through praying for healing and you've not seen it. I wanna empath empathize with that because I've been there. So I understand that. And I wanna challenge and encourage you because basically, what it is sometimes, so okay, not everything's an overnight thing. I totally get that. But there is, sometimes we set ourselves up to fa fail because I'll give, I'll give an example. Like if you pray for healing and you say, Lord, if this is your will, please God, please heal this person or heal me. Just think about it. First of all, what what are we actually saying? This is God's will, but but it is His will. He like it doesn't say sometimes by His stripes we're healed. It literally says in the Word of God, by His stripes we're healed. Yes, that healing may not look the way we want to, but we've got to come with a level of faith, uh, which is the assurance of things hoped for, the things that aren't yet seen. We have really we have all authority to speak mountain move and it will move we have an authority like we are heirs to the throne we are children of god like when you and a lot of that is down to knowing our identity in him when you know like oh my goodness like guys the same the holy spirit that lives with the side of us the same spirit that raised jesus from the dead raised jesus from the dead lives in us like sometimes i think we we hear but we don't listen we don't listen to what that actually looks like like we have been given all authority, power and dominion to speak and and it happen under obviously the will of God because anything negative then nah. Um whereas okay, another type of prayer, instead of saying, Lord, please, if this is your will, maybe try saying something like declaring, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, be healed, in the name of Jesus sickness go get out right now i know it might sound a bit much guys but you know i was praying for my mum recently she suffers with acid reflux and there's still more deliverance and healing there to happen but some guys this spirit of authority came over me and i literally put my hand on my mum's stomach because the holy spirit led me to do that and i i wasn't I wanted that for my mum so badly that I weren't gonna settle. I don't care, I said to her, I said to God, I was like, I don't care if I have to be here all day, I'm not gonna settle. And just some of the spiritual authority that came over me, I literally just said, as a reflux, get spirit of infirmity, get out now in the name of Jesus. And I kid you not, as I said that, and repeat it a couple of times, that, sorry to be TMI, but that's what big gate happened. My mum got delivered and things were being released. Um, and you know, I, that literally happened by me speaking those words. And you know, God really honors and he sees that. And um, it really showed me like, wow, like, because the thing is, uh, God moves by our faith. And it's almost like, you know, what we speak in the name of Jesus, He had, God will have to, well, he doesn't have to do anything, but he will move on what we speak and what we say. Because you know why? His word can't come back void. Like it can't. So, you know, and, and but what I think it is, guys, and I totally understand if you're feeling like this, I'm going to pray for you guys if you feel like this at the end, because I think it's really important. Because this, again, isn't about condemnation. This is just about... I truly believe God just wants to set you free and realize who you are in Christ and what he has given you authority over that actually maybe you're just going around in circles, all these cycles. Um, you know, 
like and that's why I said earlier sometimes we hinder our deliverances because we're not willing to actually believe and speak those words over our situation we actually settle we actually settle and go oh you know maybe it's God's will for me to just be suffering constantly constantly it's like that's not his will guys just saying like he that that is not Jesus does not bring suffering he he actually wants to deliver you out of that and I think there's been doctrines that have been falsely um, spoken I believe that there's been this pattern um, where it's been this like religious oppression to make you feel like oh this is just part of how it's meant to be and guys don't get it twisted I'm not God will use everything for the good but what I'm saying is is actually very it's a very deceiving deceiving thing from the enemy to make you believe that um you're meant to be sick because that's god's will for you no it's not i just want to say rebuke that lie if that's what you feel anyway what i was saying a minute ago is um is i feel what it is and i'll pray for you in a minute um maybe you have prayed for healing and for stuff and 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 you've been disappointed because it's not happened and you've not seen what you've prayed for happen and what that does and I'm I'm not saying this to preach at you guys I've done this I've literally prayed and hope for healing and different things and I've not seen everything happen as I wanted it to happen and what God showed me happened through that disappointment is there was a distrust with God and sometimes we don't realize it there was this this wall that you know maybe for you through your past disappointments and now not trusting in God to do what he says he'll do and deliver you or deliver a situation that you're in sometimes because of our fear of being disappointed we allow our prayers to be kind of wishy-washy and go oh okay you know if this is what you want for me and the thing is Jesus doesn't want that for you because like that that is the thing that gets us in those continuous cycles and um okay one example uh jesus has given me is um you know when um the, the israelites um those of you that don't know the scripture the story maybe I'll, I'll i'll actually put it in the description but um i'm just saying this off the top of my head um, the time when um, Moses delivered the Israelites from the Egyptians and they were delivered um, he part, you know through Moses part of the Red Sea and they crossed over and then after that so they were delivered but then they were wandering off in the wilderness for like I believe 40 years or something like that so they were delivered but God had set them free God had done a lot of miracles for them but uh, there was a, a time where they were just like in the wilderness and they didn't have any food or water resources and they begin to panic and what had happened is they just went around in circles for 40 years crying and complaining to God like why are we in the wilderness they were literally like we might as well rather be dead and, you know in Egypt and through that what God was saying is like through the through their unexpected disappointment um, they completely forgot how God had already delivered them like they it's like they completely forgot oh my goodness the lord just parted the red sea like they saw so many miracles so therefore it it gave this mindset where they just were so focused on the circumstance that they they forgot who god was and through their complaints like literally what was happening what god was showing me is that they um they prolonged their their deliverance purely based on what they could see in the natural um and that like they could have had a shorter wilderness if it weren't for that um mindset that they had and instead of wandering around the wilderness for 40 years I believe I need to look at the story properly but I believe literally they could have been free with like within a very short amount of time 
And the point is, and there's a bit in scripture that says about, you know, you've gone around this mountain for too long now, that's it. And the point is that that story, that example is, is there to show us that if we're not careful, we can allow feelings and thoughts of the flesh to control our lives and our expectations um, and get into that mindset where we're constantly going through repetitive cycles. Um, and like, like I shared earlier when I was going through that situation, which took me two minutes to get out of versus in the past, like it would normally take me two hours. Be why? Why, guys? Because in some situations, it, we're, we're too busy complaining and going, oh, poor me, poor me, poor me. When, yeah, get your emotion, be honest to God, get it all out there. But don't, don't spend too long dwelling on the negative. If you keep dwelling, 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 your thoughts are then so focused on that that you forget the truth. You forget the truth from the word of God. You forget who he calls you to be. What he, the plan, he says he has plans to prosper, not to harm. We, we can easily just forget those truths and we learn allow the enemy to speak the lies to us and then we believe the lies and then, you know, it goes round in a cycle, in a circle again and then we're going through the same thing. Another, it's like, um, talks in the Bible about the seeds being planted and, um, you know, the, um, the weeds like, <laughs> I'm trying to think of words guys, you know, destroy and swallow up and then they don't grow nothing grows from it and that was a metaphor for sometimes we hear the word of God but then something to do with um, circumstances that, that, that life throws at you then hinders you from growing spiritually forward in Christ so like due to due to the circumstances in that are going around you in the world it's like then you're so focused on that that the word of God is just your, your your growth is then swallowed up because you're allowing those external things to hinder you to take over, basically. So yeah, it's quite a long video. So what I'm gonna have to do this in a couple parts. But the point is, guys, my challenge today is, is tap into that authority. Start changing the way you pray. Start start declaring and saying under Jesus' name in Jesus' name, and. And, and you know, you'd have to be worried about, oh, what happens if God doesn't want this for me? At the end of the day, line it all up with scripture. You'll be surprised how much, how much God does actually care about your personal desires. Um, so anything that is um, in God's heart, anything that is of God and positive, you know, it's okay to boldly come to his throne and say, in the name of Jesus, I pray this against my circumstance and guys you'll see shifts and if you don't see what you're praying for happen straight away just know that a transformation is taking place by what you're saying and that that breakthrough that that transformation is in the mind and what you'll find is you'll no longer be moved by these um external things you'll no longer be that that fear of disappointment will leave because the as you start declaring it's happening to your authority you're unshakable and the next time the enemy throws uh, an arrow you can just be like uh, let me just get my spiritual sword speak the word of god devil you gotta go back to hell back to your little pit because that's where you belong and guys this sass is coming from the holy spirit because the thing is like we think the devil was just like has this like this scary thing that has this power over us and like really he's scared of us but He's scared of us when we tap into the authority that we've been given in Christ. Because if you're lukewarm and you're like, oh, okay, and you're just just settling, you're settling for whatever life throws at you, then it's like, you know, it's a it's an easy access for the devil, basically. But like, it's actually crazy because God does all the work. We just have to that's it, open our mouth and really believe what we're saying. Um, it's amazing. God just wants us to realise that that's because he loves us so much that he wants us to not be doormats. He wants us to like actually realise what he's given us um, so that we can live a life of freedom out of our bondages without having to go around the same mountain 5,000 times. Because we ain't got time for that. Like, you know, let's make the most of the life we've been given. 
and watch your transformation as you begin to tap into that authority. Watch yourself. Your mindset's going to be renewed. Your mindset's going to be changed. Um, it says, you know, don't conform to the pants of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when you, that only comes with declaring the truth of yourself and having faith to believe what what God says to you. Have faith to believe the words that are written in the Bible over your life. So yeah, that's my little encouragement and challenge for today. I pray that um, you get something out of this. And actually, I did say I was going to pray, actually, for those of you. This is for those of you that actually have been um, hurt and that have a fear of disappoint being disappointed by God. And I, like I said, I understand that. So I'm just going to pray for you if you if, if this has spoken to you and you and that's something that you're struggling with right now that distrust with God I was gonna pray for you and I just want you to just you know be open and have your hands out just to receive this guys as I'm praying because he truly wants to set you free from that um, from that lie because he's good and he, he'll never let you down so, uh, dear Lord Jesus, I just thank you that you love us so much, Lord. And I just pray for those that are watching this that have that fear of disappointment and that because of that has affected the way they pray and the, the, the types of prayers that they're praying, Lord. And I just pray right now in Jesus' name, I declare healing in the heart, Jesus. I pray healing in the heart and in the mind. Um, in the name of Jesus, release release those lies for them now right now spirit of disappointment leave get out now in the name of jesus um and i pray lord that you will um you, you know you're um instead of a heart of stone you're putting a heart of flesh where you'll just um do that that spiritual surgery lord on their heart so that they um they can freely come to you jesus without fear without fear of the outcome lord jesus so um yeah, I just pray you'll heal those areas right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So guys, yeah, um, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Um, I hope you feel encouraged as well as challenged, all out of love, because ultimately, Jesus wants the best for you. He wants you to live in the abundance of, of life that the world isn't going to give you, but it's found in him. So take care. Bye.